Hey guys, I've got a call coming up in just a minute, but I wanted to give you a really quick personal service, uh, it's a public service announcement. So I, I was just, I just saw this just, this just a second ago. Someone was talking about what, um, what starches can I eat? I have to make this very, very clear. So on a physiological level, if you have any kind of gut inflammation going on, you're not going to be able to digest carbohydrates to the full capacity, which means you are leaving food for these pathogens to overgrow in your small intestine. The complex digestion, the digestion of complex carbohydrates starts with amylase in your mouth. You break long chains of starch into disaccharide sugars. So in the case of most starches like rice and potatoes and things like that, the starch is being broken down into maltose. This is a disaccharide sugar. It's still not absorbable. So even if this stage of digestion happens and it's fine, it's, it's still not enough. Once it exits through the, it goes, so you mix it with amylase, it comes down through the, through the, um, through the gullet, the esophagus, into the stomach, the digestion there stops. Amylase is basically destroyed by stomach acid, it's inactivated. Then it enters the small intestine. It gets remixed with amylase that's produced by your pancreas, which helps start breaking it down again. So any more starch that still isn't digested is broken down into maltose. But then this maltose needs to be broken down into glucose. So glucose is the actual monosaccharide bioavailable form of carbohydrate that we get from, from like eating these starches. So in order for it to be broken down from maltose to glucose, to, so one molecule of maltose goes into two molecules of glucose, we need the enzyme maltase. Maltase is a brush border enzyme, which means it's present on the surface of the small intestine. So you've got these little villi, on, like all the way through our small intestine and on the top of these villi all the way around we've got little brush border enzymes one of them is maltase so if these villi are damaged they don't have as many so they could be like this they could be like this and even if they're like this this surface might be damaged so if you've got bad imbalanced gut flora on any of these surfaces there's going to be less maltase enzyme being produced which means instead of the maltose being broken down into glucose and you absorbing it and using it as energy and fuel and it nourishing your body, fueling your immune system, making you strong, these bacteria or whatever it is that's on these microvilli that's damaging it, that's stopping you being able to produce this maltase enzyme, they're eating it instead. And this means that they, that they take the maltose, they ferment it, they produce toxic compounds, they produce irritants, things that damage this microflora even more, which perpetuates this cycle where you continue eating these starches and you're unable to digest them because they feed this flora that's living on the, on the microvilli that damage the microvilli, which then stop you being able to digest it. So you get stuck in this vicious cycle. This is the whole premise of the book, Breaking the Vicious Cycle. And this is what the GAPS book is built on. If you notice in the GAPS book, it's a complete elimination of all starches. This doesn't mean you have to go zero carb. It's a very important distinction. So remember, like I said, this is about the digestion of starch. But if you're eating carbohydrates that aren't a starch, they're already in a monosaccharide form. So a good example is something like, say, milk. Milk has got lactose in it. To break lactose down into glucose and galactose, which are the two monosaccharides that form a lactose molecule, we need lactase. Lactase, sure, we can produce it but most of the time it's produced by our own gut flora. If our gut flora aren't there to produce the enzyme for us, we don't digest it. It feeds these bacteria, they damage the gut, they imbalance the microbiome, and you're stuck in this perpetual cycle again. Make sure that you're eating sugars that are in a monosaccharide form, which means they're already ready for absorption. They don't need to be digested. They don't need enzymes to break them down. They're ready to go straight into your gut. So what does this look like? This looks like any kind of ripe fruit. The riper it is, the more it's broken down. So compare a green banana to a black banana, like a, like a really spotty that's gone completely black. The green one is very hard. It's very, it tastes starchy. You can feel that starchiness on your teeth when you eat it. And this is because the sugars are in starch form. So you can think of like a plantain is a really, really starchy banana. And all of these sugars are going to be hard to digest, they're, they're starches, so you're going to need to go through this process that I just said. Whereas when you get a black one, you taste it, it's super, super sweet. And that's because all of the starch has been broken down by the enzymes that are naturally present in the banana. So that way, you're completely skipping the digestion. The, the banana has basically digested itself for you, which is quite a, quite a funny, quite funny way to think about it. But then you eat it and all of the starch has already been broken down into monosaccharide sugars. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna eat carbs on any, with, with any kind of gut problem, ripe fruit is the best way to go. Another good option is honey. Honey is made of, of, 
of like um, nectar from plant from uh, from flowers, and it's um, glucose and fructose. So if you've got fructose malabsorption, that might be something that you want to avoid, but because it's quite high in fructose. But um, either way, it's going to be more digestible than eating starch because if your gut's damaged, you just you just physiologically don't have the machinery to digest that kind of food. Gut problems are complicated, but they're not they're not that complicated. They're just science. If you can just sort of shed a bit of light on the science and understand the physiology, the biology, the biochemistry that's going on in the gut, it's just like wow, makes sense why these foods make me bloated. It's like well yeah, because you don't have the machinery to digest them. So I just wanted to keep this short. I've got a call coming up just now, so I'm going to have to go. But if you've got any questions about this kind of thing, let me know. I love talking about this. It's, it's, it's super awesome. This is one of the foundational premises of, like I said, specific carbohydrate diet, GAPS diet, and food combining. So you could look into those if you want, to, you want any more information. Or let me know, and I'll help you out. Thanks for coming. See you guys on the next tip. Bye-bye.